Avocados. I've yet to meet a single gardener who doesn't want to grow one of these amazing fruits. They're great on toast, they make delicious guacamole, and they're super nutritious. Who doesn't love an avocado? It's too bad that just one of these guys would cost you a couple bucks at the store. But luckily for those of us who know how to grow stuff, we can grow these for free. But how do we grow an avocado? How do we take it from seed to tree? Well, you're in the right place because today this video is all about the avocado. And for those of you who live in the tropics, you'll get extra value because I'm going to share with you variety to ensure that you get avocados from your garden all year round. So are you ready? Let's do it. The avocado tree is a common sight in many Hawaiian gardens, having been brought here over 200 years ago from Latin America, which since then have crossbred to create new varieties and strains that are unique to Hawaii that grow in all sorts of microclimates. Now I'll get into it in a little bit, but it's these varieties that allow us to have year-round avocado production in the island. If you're like me, in school you had to sprout an avocado seed using a cup with some water and toothpicks. That's a pretty easy way to germinate an avocado seed, and it sure is cool to watch them unfold. But I normally just plant my seeds half buried in the pot, and this is how an avocado tree starts its life. In a lot of parts around Hawaii, they just do this naturally in the wild because they just love this climate so much. Now, when you grow an avocado tree from a seed, you never know what you're going to get. You could be growing the next best thing in terms of avocado, or it could turn out to be watery, big seeded junk. To make sure growers know what they're getting, they'll probably end up grafting these seedlings. Now, grafting a tree is simply taking a branch from a tree that you know that you like the fruit from and then putting it onto a rootstock that is hardy and can grow in your environment. And you don't have to graft an avocado seedling. It's just to ensure that you know what you're gonna get. I, for one, like to let my seedlings grow up and fruit. It might be the one that produces awesome avocados and is super resistant to all sorts of pests and diseases. And if it turns out bad, you can chop it down and graft a variety that you like. It's not the end of the world. But I'm just patient like that, I guess. I'm willing to wait a few years to see if I could get a new variety that I could come up with a new name for. Imagine Homestead Novo, Inaloa Gold, or simply maybe The Best. That's a name for an avocado. The Best Avocado. Yeah, that's what I'll name it. When I get my own variety, I'll call it The Best. Now, as I was saying, most people graft young avocado seedlings like this before they get big. It's a pretty easy process. In fact, it's one that I went over in a previous video with Anthony from Grow Paradise, and he showed us his technique to do it really easily. It is definitely worth watching after this video is done. But for most people, though, they'll find a grafted avocado tree at their local nursery. And they'll see trees with labels like Malama or Yamagata or Green Gold or Sharwell. The only problem is, which one do you choose? Well, that depends on where you live, and what season you want to harvest from. Now you see, most avocados like plenty of moisture, but they don't like to be waterlogged and they don't like to be dry. The soil has to be really well draining and that's difficult in a lot of microclimates. 70% of the commercial avocado production today in Hawaii takes place in Kona. Here in um, Puna, we also have great conditions for growing avocados because our soil drains really quickly. But in other areas, where the soil gets more waterlogged, you might have more issues with disease or whatnot, or it may just be too dry to grow good avocados and you have to supplement it with a lot of water. But regardless, there's probably a variety of avocado that will grow well depending on your microclimate in which you live in. Isn't that pretty cool? Over 200 years of breeding has allowed us to find all sorts of varieties that do well in all sorts of parts of the island. So the best thing that you can do to find out what will grow best for where you're at is to ask a neighbor what they're growing. And if you could graft a branch from that tree, that's the golden ticket. But at least you might be able to find out what kind of variety it is so that you can look for it at your local nursery. You may also have to consider what season your avocado ripens in because different varieties of avocados will have different ripening times. A Malama avocado will be ready to harvest early in the season, whereas a Yamagata will be ready to harvest late in the season. And by growing the right varieties, you might be able to have avocados all year long, not just during one season or the other. 
Now, I bet you'd love to have a list of what varieties to grow so that you could have a year-long avocado production. Lucky for you, I created a PDF that you can download right now by clicking the link below this video. All right, now, there's one more thing you should think about when choosing what type of avocado to grow in your backyard food forest, and that is what flowering type is it? You see, avocados come in two flowering types, an A type and a B type. An A type avocado flower opens up early in the morning as a female, and then it closes at noon. On the next day, it opens up again at noon, but this time it opens up as a male, and it closes in the evening time. Now, B type is a little bit different. It opens up around noon as a male and closes in the evening. And then the next day, it opens up again around noon, but this time as a female. And so with this going on between two types of trees, you can increase the cross pollination of both. Now, you only really need one tree to grow avocados, but if you wanna grow a lot more avocados, you need an A type and a B type. If you have a small space, you can graft these two types onto one avocado tree, or you can plant the two types of avocado trees in the same hole and have them grow up together. That's something I did in a backyard in the Bay Area of California, where I planted an A type and a B type together at the same time, and they grew up at the same rate and were able to cross pollinate each other from just being grown in the same hole. And by growing them together, it kind of created a dwarf quality to the two trees so they didn't get too big. So that was a great strategy for a small backyard. And if you have one, you might want to think about doing that yourself. Here in Hawaii, many of us have been introduced to the avocado lace bug, a recently arrived pest that wreaks havoc on our avocados. A sign of lace bug is brown spots on leaves, eventually leading to defoliation. You'll see the bugs on the underside of the avocado leaves. This leaves our avocado without leaves to photosynthesize and produce food, leading to smaller harvests as well as a potential for sunburn on the trunks. But I've found that if I keep feeding my avocados a nitrogen-rich fertilizer, they'll produce more leaves. And then these leaves become less palatable to lace bugs, and now three to four years after they first caused their most damage, I hardly see anything. I can still see the avocado lace bugs, but they're not having as much of an effect. And I'm harvesting plenty of avocados again. So how do you know when they're ready to harvest? I usually let them just fall on the ground and pick them up from there. They stay hard when they're on the tree and will soften once they leave the tree. So I could prolong my harvest if I just wait till they fall off naturally. But if you want to harvest all of these guys all at once, you can use dropping as a sign of um, ready to harvest. You can also um, pick one and see if it breaks off easily. Right now, these are all still a little green, um, not ready to pick, but pretty soon they will be ready. And if you still can't tell, normally the rats will tell you because they'll start to eat all of these guys. And you better pick them before they get to them. This is what all that work was for, guys. An endless supply of avocados. So much, in fact, that you're gonna wanna start giving them away. Or maybe turn it into avocado oil, which is something I hope to do one day and make a video out of it. So just be aware that once your avocado tree is done fruiting, it'll probably lose a lot of its leaves. This is completely natural. And it's also perfectly natural for an avocado tree to take a year off from producing after a big year of making fruit. I don't imagine this tree to be making much next year. So don't go cutting anything down too quickly, okay guys? In fact, if you want to help your trees out during this time, feed it some compost and apply some mulch down on the soil. That'll help any plant in your garden. Now, avocados really are a joy to grow in my backyard food forest. They're able to fill in the overstory canopy of my food forest pretty quickly, and it provides my family with a ton of healthy fats so that we always have food to eat. Now, are you growing avocados? You should be. So why don't you go ahead and check out my video on how to graft avocados? And I'll see you over there, all right? Till next time, everybody. Ahoy ho.